Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, good morning, everybody. Uh, and thank you for, for having me here. As uh, well as my name is Silvia Lunni. Uh, I am based in Brussels. I work for a uh, public affairs and communication consultancy called the Hague of Corporate Affairs. And my job is uh, EU public affairs, which means uh, shaping and influencing the development of policies and regulations at European level. Uh, I do it for in many areas, among which uh, medicinal cannabis, via uh, what we call a multi-stakeholder approach, which is represented by Medicinal Cannabis Europe, which uh, is the association that uh, Haig set up back in, tw in 2019. And in this presentation, I'll just, just uh, go through with you on, the, uh, on our, well, the, 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 the role of Medicinal Cannabis Europe, our goals, uh, what we have accomplished so far, especially in terms of uh, our political engagement, um, and uh, also, if you're interested, how you could uh, be part of Medicinal Cannabis Europe. So when we uh, started back in 2019, and in general when uh, um, when we uh, look for uh, projects or uh, ideas in, uh, in, uh, in EU affairs, we always look at what's, uh, what's the status quo. In this case, what's the, what was the status quo of uh, EU regulation in terms of medicinal cannabis, uh, which I'm sure you are all uh, uh, very much aware, and uh, I would uh, uh, summarize with a word which, uh, which is uh, fragmentation. Um, I will go very quick on this, as I'm sure you're uh, all aware. Uh, medicinal cannabis regulations are quite different across member states. So there are member states which are more advanced on one part of the medicinal cannabis supply chain and others uh, are advanced in other parts of the supply chain. However, the European uh, Europe is becoming and is on the way to become a leading market in medicinal cannabis and a lack of a new regulatory framework on medicinal cannabis not only poses hurdles to, to the industry, cultivation of uh, or pharma, but also to the other uh, aspect or segment of the, what we call the value chain, uh, which are, for instance, the scientific and medical community and the patients. And all these segments are strictly interlinked, so if the, uh, if the industry cannot develop in a smooth way, then also these affect also patient access to high quality and safe medicines. So we said, okay, uh, we have this, these hurdles, we have this situation, there is a gap at EU level of representation of these interests, if we want to, say, if we want to call it like that, how can we address that? And that's how we set up Medicinal Cannabis Europe, which is the only EU multi-stakeholder uh, coalition that uh, was mission is to ensure patients are access to medicinal cannabis in the EU. Our why is, of course, because of the uh, therapeutic benefits uh, of medicinal cannabis in the application on the treatment of different conditions and diseases, but at the same time, the lack of a framework that can ensure that patients can have fair access uh, of, to these medicines across Europe. And how do we approach this jointly uh, with the medicinal cannabis value chain? So, what do we mean by multi-stakeholder approach? Uh, it means that so, medicinal cannabis Europe is a membership-based association, and in our association we have all the, the three main segments that we uh, identified of the cannabis, medicinal cannabis value chain. So we have the industry, we have the medical and, and the uh, scientific community, and we have the patients. So we have a, a, a big uh, pool of patient association from different member states, which uh, we will see afterwards uh, is also uh, what allowed us to gain the political support uh, we have now. And it's also how, what we saw lacking at EU level. So we saw a lack of representation of uh, medicine and cannabis patients, or a coordinated uh, representation of medicine and cannabis patients. So when we started, uh, uh, we started, we had this idea of multi-stakeholder approach, uh, different segment of the cannabis value chain, and we said, okay, how, how can we put that in? So we asked ourselves, we want to ensure patients have access to medicine and cannabis, what do we mean, what, what do we need to do that? 
and we identified three pillars. One is, of course, from a regulatory perspective, so uh, ensuring that there is a regulatory framework, a harmonized regulatory framework for medicine and cannabis in the EU. We are, I'm sure you are all uh, well aware, aware of uh, all the different hurdles that exist. These are just few of them, of course, when it comes to uh, cultivation and production, harmonizing standards, when it comes to affordability of medicines, uh, that patients, well, patients, if, if medicines are not affordable for patients, they, don't, they won't buy them or they will resort to other routes to get the, the treatment and the medicine they need. And also when it comes to uh, free movement of people. So we had issues, uh, well, there are issues of, of patients, for instance, moving from a member state to another with a completely different approach to medicinal cannabis and, and maybe a, a patient who was uh, who legally use uh, a medicine based on cannabis in one member state will not be able to use it legally in another member state. So this is also uh, another hard tool, but there are many more, I'm sure you're all aware, aware of it. Then we have another pillar, which is research, research and innovation. So one of the main uh, hurdles, especially for, for the medical, for the medicinal cannabis, is the so-called uh, lack of scientific evidence. Um, that is, uh, that we have and we hear, hear a lot, also from policymakers. And so another point, another pillar of our advocacy is to really uh, promoting uh, research and innovation. So in Europe, in, in, Europe, in Europe, as well as at national level, there are funding schemes, I'm also sure you're aware of that, such as Horizon in Europe, who allocate funding for research and innovation on specific areas, among which health, and we're pushing in that direction to allocate uh, funding for medicinal cannabis research. In different, under, in different ways, it can be uh, research uh, projects on the application of medicinal cannabis on specific conditions. In this case, well, we are, we are focusing especially on conditions which are also a priority in the EU, because when you do advocacy uh, at all levels, so all, I believe also at national level, you you know what you want to say, what you want to convey, what is your message, but you also need to know what the other party and your interlocutor is willing to listen to and is willing and interested in knowing. So, uh, as a first step, we focus on, uh, uh, in this case, condition diseases, which are also priority in, at the EU level. Cancer, rare diseases, this is something that is already work which is ongoing at the EU level and it's work where we see a role for medicinal cannabis and that's the route we take to allocate and to try to uh, allocate research, uh, resources and funding for medicinal cannabis research at this stage. And then we also had, um, well of course, clinical trials um, that are useful and are needed to build up the, the, the real uh, evidence that then would allow and first accelerate the uptake of, uh, um, of medicinal cannabis. And then we have a third pillar, which if I would uh, uh, prioritize, would be the, let's say the, the foundation on which the other two build. And it's the narrative around medicine and cannabis, which we are seeing, and I think we also, dis we also discussed it in the previous uh, uh, panels, we, we are seeing it developing. Uh, I think uh, since we started uh, three, four years ago, uh, this has already uh, been developed in the, in, the, in the right direction, but it's not uh, over. So this is uh, one of the pillars that we, uh, we work on and on which we started uh, with our policy uh, maker engagement, because not only we need a social dialogue, but we need a political dialogue. Because when we started back in 2019, medicine and cannabis was barely in the political discussions at EU level, barely. And when you do not, when you, the topic you want to advocate for is not in the agenda and you have to put it in the agenda, you have to push a discussion on it. We have to make sure that the topic is in political discussion and that's what we, uh, what we did first. And one thing that we uh, got in our exchange with policymakers is the importance of a clear distinction between medical and recreational, um, especially at EU level. So that's where we focus, we focus on the medical side, we promote multi-stakeholder dialogue, and of course another, another uh, point is not only educating 
policy makers so externally to the value chain, but also educating the segment of the value chain. That's also another hurdle that we encountered and that were also, was also mentioned by the panels before, is the education, the knowledge of healthcare professionals, doctors, nurses, pharmacists, which, uh, which is important and for which um, there is a, a, an EU angle that can be explored. So these are the three pillars of our advocacy, uh, but it all it all bases on uh, a, let's say a, a prerequisite from our side, which is understanding what we mean by medicinal cannabis uh, and trying to have an harmonized understanding as possible of medicinal cannabis. And this is what uh, we're pushing for at the moment, and this is also one of the first uh, um, actions that the EU is starting doing. Uh, the EU cannot, cannot develop a binding definition, but what the EU can do is providing and, and suggesting a harmonized definition as much as possible. So this is let's say, the bulk of our advocacy. Once we had this in place, we said, okay, how, to whom we address our concerns? So in the EU, you have three different uh, and main institutions. You have the Commission, you have the Parliament, and you have the Council. And naturally, uh, the, the, the first institution we went to was the Parliament. Why? Because the Parliament is meant to represent EU citizens. We were going there with the perspective of, of patient, with a value chain, but with a patient-centered approach, which resonates very well with policymakers. We presented the policy pledge. It took some time, but we managed to build some support. And in the second half of last year, we uh, facilitated the setup of uh, a European Parliament interest group on medicinal cannabis. Now, an interest group is an informal group of MEPs who, MEPs meaning, sorry, this is the EU jargon, members of the European Parliament, which are shortened MEPs. Um, a group of MEPs who informally gathers uh, to, in a, and focuses on a specific topic. In this case, is uh, medicinal cannabis. We have so far uh, 36 MEPs from uh, different political groups. And uh, why uh, this is important? It is important because we don't want the topic of medicinal cannabis to be polarized in the discussion. We want it to be a broad uh, political support. And uh, so far we have it, we will, uh, uh, we will continue to, uh, to increase and to broaden the support, but that's a good start. And uh, MEPs represent 20 countries, which out of 27, it's, it's, quite, a good, uh, it's quite a good number. Um, now you would ask me what, what, how can, what the Parliament can do, what, what they can do to help uh, uh, our cause. Well, there are three, three main things that they can help us with. One is facilitating multi-stakeholder dialogue. What do we mean by that? It means that, as I said before, to put a, a topic in the political discussion, you need to create the conditions for this topic to be discussed. And one of the conditions is to have the key policy makers involved in this. Now, if Medicine and Cannabis Europe just reaches out to uh, member states like so, uh, let's say that the chances of success are much lower than if a, any other institution reaches out to look for events, discussions, front tables, and so on. So this is a, 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 an important role, and this is also what helped us, we will see in the, uh, in the, in the slide afterwards, uh, making the first step towards this uh, multi-stakeholder and policymaking discussion. Then they can support our advocacy. Uh, so the, the Parliament has its own tools, uh, instruments to, uh, to push a topic towards uh, uh, the Commission and the other member states. So they, uh, they also have side uh, all possibilities to, to advocate directly and to support our, our cause and our goals. Uh, <laughs> and then they can broaden our, uh, our uh, social dialogue and, and reach a broader range of audience uh, that can be also fellow MEPs or uh, their constituencies uh, uh, and so on. So uh, these, three, uh, these three elements uh, are very important to push our goals further. And one example, for instance, is the, one of the first activities we did with them was to organize uh, an event in the Parliament. It was uh, uh, last March, at the end of March. 
uh, which uh, where, where, where we, we featured the different uh, representatives from policymakers. So we had the parliament, of course, the, the interest group, all the MEPs, and in particular two MEPs who uh, part, uh, participated in the event. We had the commission. We had uh, representatives from uh, uh, two national authorities, France and Czech Republic. The choice was not uh, uh, random. The choice was on purpose because uh, at the time uh, France was leading the uh, council, so the member state work, and now it's Czech Republic. So it's also through, through these opportunities we also create a network uh, at EU level with the member states. And then we had the representatives from the uh, Medicine and Cannabis Value Chain, which also are members of uh, Medicine and Cannabis Europe. So we have our Vice President Jacqueline Potras uh, from Mamaka, uh, from the Patient Association, Dr. Babak Baban, who is uh, one of our Scientific Advisory Board members, and we have uh, Finanza, who is uh, from Sanity, Sanity Group, uh, who is also part of our board. So this is uh, our advocacy at EU level. It may be a little bit different from uh, a more technical advocacy, but the technical and what we call the so-called so uh, more political advocacy, both are important to push a topic forward. Because at the end, it's the, how to say, it's the political, the more political level who gives the direction to the technical levels. That's, not, that, that, that's how it goes. So there need to be a push from both sides. And, well, uh, as I said, Mason and Cannabis Europe is a membership-based association, so we uh, invite uh, and we invite everybody who is interested in, uh, in, uh, in participating in Mason and Cannabis Europe um, to, to, uh, to reach out to me. Uh, we, can, we welcome every segment of value chain, so cultiva cultivation, uh, pharmaceutical, uh, medicine and doctors, and patient associations as well. And well, just a wrap up of what we do. Uh, of course, we, we contribute to raising awareness and shaping the, the debate on medicinal cannabis, also with policymakers, patients, and, and the public. Of course, being active in Brussels and having a foot in Brussels allows us to have intelligence on what's going on when it comes to medicinal cannabis in the, in the EU. Uh, we are a part also of a, of a good network with, uh, uh, with patients, uh, with the medical community, and with other EU associations as well. And of course, our final goal and ultimate goal is to shape the policy developments on medicinal cannabis. I hope that was, uh, that was uh, interesting. Uh, if you are, well, if you are curious and want to, to reach out to me and to have more information, don't hesitate. I'm here the whole day. And if anybody, if we have time. Yes, we do. Oh, that's amazing. One more time, Sylvia Looney. Thank you very much. Any questions? I think there are no questions at all. Oh. Was crystal clear? Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I want to miss all that. Hi, um, really nice presentation. Um, I was wondering if um, you're hearing sort of anything at, among those EMPs uh, about the prioritizing of medicinal cannabis with everything that's going on right now uh, uh, in Europe. Uh, you mean on the on the other urgent yes, issues? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah uh, let's say that the the uh, path and the, the work with the uh, political level of medicinal cannabis it's it's at an early stage. What we are now focusing on, and also what we are focusing on via the MEPs and with the MEPs, is on. Uh, uh, as I said, building this political discussion, making sure that this is something that is discussed. Um, and in the, in currently, we also following the, the, the developments um, more from a regulatory perspective uh, at European uh, uh, at European Medicine Agency. This is uh, something that has been going on. Um, 
Yes, of course, the current, the current uh, topics are very important and are taking over, but I'm not taking over only cannabis, I'm taking over many other topics also, other topics I'm working on. But let's say that the early stage of, 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 the, of the discussion on medicinal cannabis allows us uh, still to have room for, to do what we, what we have to do at this stage. Uh, hello. Uh, I have a question. What is your personal view on uh, extracts and is the uh, share between flower and extracts? And what is regulatory view on uh, was uh, medical cannabis would be only should be in Europe only extracts and not flower? Um, we don't have a, a position on that. What we're pushing for is uh, what we're working on for with the uh, with the Commission is on a harmonized definition. Uh, now the Commission has been, uh, uh, has went up and published a kind of a glossary where they also put down all the different definitions, including extracts. Uh, if interested, I can share with you. Um, but this is where we are at this stage. So what would be the future? So what is your current, is it like advisors to regulators, this is your current view on uh, this issue, cutting flowers and textiles? Not currently. Not Are you doing something in this area, like trials, with overall thinking, like visionary? Sorry? Are you doing any research on this? Uh, we are doing partially with our scientific advisory board, but that is more on the r and side. It's more on the research and innovation side. Okay. Thank you. Not on the policy regulatory side. Before we come to an end, um, let me please ask you a question. Sure. Um, because uh, when we look on the international laws, uh, it comes to the point that any country uh, having a med uh, medical cannabis program actually needs a cannabis agency. How many European EU, EU countries uh, to de you deal with have a cannabis, have a cannabis agency? Sorry, again. How many EU, EU countries have a cannabis agency as a basic for medicinal cannabis so far? Uh, not many, not many, um, because uh, because member states are applying the topic of medicinal cannabis in a different way. You will have member states which are implementing the so-called pilot programs. We have France, for instance. We had uh, Ireland. We had Denmark. Uh, which is a completely different approach than, for instance, uh, Czech Republic, uh, which has a drug coordinator, or uh, the Netherlands, which has an agency and so on. So, uh, also the way member states are regulating medicine, the, the, or the way the structure, the governance of medicine and economics in member states is structured is different. So that, of course, contributes. But this is something that at EU level, this is, the EU has not the competence to tell member states. So let, let me please ask an additional question. Uh, due to the UN Treaty on uh, Drugs, any country that uh, has a medical cannabis program has to have a cannabis agency just as an open agency. So how come that countries implementing a medical cannabis program do not open up a cannabis agency? Because I remember in Germany before anything was dealt with medical cannabis here, we had to, to open up the cannabis agency and it was always re a delay, it was always the reason that we do not have this agency on federal level. Federal level. So uh, how come that countries implemented pro programs just on how such a thing? Indeed, that's a question I cannot, I cannot answer. But uh, I think there are also, like, there are always side ways on which you can, uh, you can deal with a topic like medicine and cannabis. You can have a, create a special program, only a, a trial program, and then if it works, then we can see how to move forward. That's, for instance, the approach of, uh, of France. Uh, so, yeah. That's Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you very much. Yes. One more time.